Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution Arc 5 campaign. We are moving on towards the next duel, Family Face-Off, where we will be playing as Shun Kurosaki against his younger sister, Rui. Well, I'm all up for another chance to play as Raid Raptors. We're gonna go with Stone here. Well, I have no idea why her English name is Lulu. <laughs> it makes no sense at all. It's like changing Yuzu to Zuzu. Like, what is the point of that? Like, isn't Yuzu like already an accepted word in English for the fruits? And oh, we've got Mimicry Lanius in our deck this time. I don't remember having it the previous times. And Raid Raptor Readiness. Man, that is a classic Raid Raptor card. I can't believe we haven't been playing without it and Mimicry in like the previous two times we've used Raids. And Raid Raptor Call as well. Let's start with a look at our extra deck. Three copies of Stranger Falcon. Three copies of Ride. One! Four Strix! Finally, they give us four Strix! The ace card of the deck, man! Three copies of Blaze Falcon and nothing above rank 5, no revolution. We are going to start off with an Allure of Darkness play. Let's draw two cards and wait a minute. Two copies of Rank Up Magic Raid Force. Okay, we are going to drop Pain Lanius here actually because we've got no choice. That was very unfortunate. I was actually really hoping to at least draw into one other Raid Raptor. Looks like we've got no choice to go for this play. I normal summon Mimicry Lanius. And I am going to Raid Raptor Call right now. And we will, well, special summon another Mimicry from our deck. Now that we have two Raid Raptor monsters on the field, this will allow us to activate Raid Raptor's Nest and use its effect immediately. We are definitely going to search for a Banishing Lanius, the classic Raid Raptor. Now I'm sure you guys can guess what's going to happen next. I overlay my two level 4 Raid Raptors Mimicry Laniuses. With these two monsters, I construct the overlay network. Ambient Hunter of the Afterlife, seek the truth with those dark eyes and grasp glory with your short talents. XA Summon! Rank 4, take flights in defense position, Raid Raptors, Four Strix. Oh yeah, we got Four Strix out on the field and activating its effect, we're gonna detach one Mimicry Lanius for the search. I believe we should steal a uh, Fuzzy Lanius right now. That is definitely gonna come in handy next turn. And we are actually gonna activate the effect of the Mimicry Lanius sent to our grave as well, giving us a search for, I believe, a Raid Raptor's card. So we have the options for Readiness Call and a Nest as well. But I am gonna go for Tribute Lanius, which is gonna set up our field very nicely. I want to save the last material of my for streaks, so I'm gonna set readiness in the uh, just gonna set readiness and end our turn. Nice. This this is like the classic first turn red raptor play I always make in all of my red raptors matches. One for one. Okay. Nope. I don't think I'll need readiness just yet, and we will be fighting Liri Lusk. I guess that's the dub name, but I think the Japanese name is like Lyrical Luscania or something and Luscania is like one of those uh, scientific terms or like just the name of like a kind of bird, like a sparrow I think. Oh wait, I can't remember because that's a swallow and here we have a nightingale. Okay, I can't remember what uh, Luscania means. But I need to read, I'm gonna read this guy's effect. Okay, this isn't gonna be a threat to my four tricks. It is just gonna inflict a lot of damage to me. Wait! No way! Hold up, that's a crazy combo! Wow, it literally just started raining outside, but anyway, if I let this go through, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna lose three cards in my hand, and the problem with Robin Goblin is that it's gonna be a random card. So I can't select which cards I want to keep. So this, I think I'm actually gonna react with Raid Raptor's Readiness. First I'll activate it, and now that it's in the grave, I hope to activate it again. I've got to discard one for the first one because I was too late on that. Okay, one, 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 ring, one raid force is fine. Hold on, wait. I can't activate my second readiness effect. The turn it's activated. No, both of my raid forces. Okay, yeah, it looks like I can't activate the second effect. The, tu the turn it's sent to the grave. We lost Fuzzy Lanius, which will at least trigger Fuzzy Lanius. So we've got it coming back at the very least. So that's one thing we have going for us. Unfortunately, we really lost that. Uh, we, oh, but we went into Revolution Force! 
Oh, I couldn't activate readiness earlier because I need to have Red Raptor, Red Raptor monster in my grave and until I discarded Fuzzy Linus, I couldn't activate it. Okay, I understand now but we are actually still in a very good position. I'm going to normal summon Vanishing Linus and we are going to activate its effect in order to... Uh, hold up, no. Uh, we are going to activate its effect and bring out Tribute Linus as well. I am going to activate Tribute Linus's effect in order to drop... Hmm, I think I am actually going to drop one of my Pain Linus's just because I don't want to draw into it, so we'll just mill our deck with that. I'll activate the effect of Force Tricks again. We will discard Mimicry Linus in order to add another Banishing Linus to our hand. That's fine. And we can now activate the effect of Mimicry Linus in our grave. And what I'm going to pull out in this case is another copy of Readiness. We are going to set readiness and now activate the nest in order to search for a booster strix would be nice I think. Now I activate from my hand the rank of magic revolution force targeting my four strix. I overlay my rank four four strix. With this one monster I reconstruct the overlay network. Unseen Bolt Falcon, here and now, reveal the unknown power hidden within your wings. Rank up, Xyz change! In attack position, rank 5, Raid Raptors, Strange Falcon! Oh yeah, and we are not gonna activate its effect, we are just gonna pop right into our battle phase. Attack Nightingale with our Tribute Lanius. He is gonna, well, she's gonna protect it with that. I'll attack it with Vanishing Lanius now. And, oh, hold up, it's for the turn. I see. Dude, and it also protects against effect destruction. So there is literally nothing I can do here. Man, I did not think it would be that difficult to deal with. I am gonna activate something right now. And it's going to be the readiness from my grave. Nice. So we will prevent any uh, effect damage from being inflicted to us. She is setting a monster. I think Stranger Falcon is still a pretty good choice to keep on our field. Should we summon a monster? I think not. I'm gonna use the nest again. And this time we... Oh, we'll search for an Avenge Vulture. Alright. And this is probably gonna be in vain, but we're still gonna do it anyway. I attack the Nightingale with my Tribute Lanius. It will protect itself once more. And it affects all Lyric Lyrilask monsters, I believe. But just in case uh, her set monster is not a Lyrilask, let's just attack it with Stranger Falcon. But it looks like it is one. Cobalt Sparrow, and we'll end our turn. She's going to battle, I am going to take it. 200 damage and one random discard from my hand right now. I don't think it's going to be that much of a threat, that's fine. She's ending and she only has one more turn left of her protection. We are going to set our second readiness of course and uh, activate Nest again. We will bring back uh, Booster Strix. Nice. And go into our battle phase, it's time to attack the Nightingale again, it'll activate for the last time, so now she has no more protection and we can end our turn. Okay, so next turn onwards, we should have this going on, we just need to make sure to clear her field, so that we don't have to deal with another assembled Nightingale. I don't think she has a spell like readiness that applies to Lirilla, so that's fine and she didn't summon more monsters anyway, so this is going very well for us little fairy. Honestly, I have no idea why, why that's there, it's not very good. We'll activate the nest again. I will take another tribute Lanius. And I think I'm just gonna summon it. 
So going into our battle phase, we will just attack with both tributes. And then attack the other one. And now direct attack with Vanishing Lanius. Into Battle Fader. Okay, wow. So wait, the battle phase ends right there. Now the question is if she can bring out uh, two more level 1 monsters. Because that is going to be so annoying to have to deal with again. She's just going for a set. And just ending her turn. So things are looking pretty good for us. Let's summon an Avenge Vulture. I don't think I should search for more cards from my deck at this point. But might as well just to mill it over. Because I really want to get into my spells and traps. We will add another Tribute Manius. So now going into our battle phase, we are really going to wreck the field now. Now I'll attack with Avenge. Hopefully there's no more battle fader. Pinpoint Guard, come on! Okay. Cobalt Sparrow, it, wait, it has an effect? Oh man, for a surge. Now this is dangerous. Let me think about this. But there's really nothing I can do. I feel strangely suspicious that they want us to use Blaze Falcon for this fight just because uh, it can direct attack so we can actually get past all the Lyrilusks that are resistant to battle or effect destruction. I really hope she doesn't go into something here. You just imagine if all of the spells and traps in her deck are just basically protection and she's just gonna stall all the way. She's just setting so that's a good sign. Oh man, and another back row. Do I have Raptor's Gust in this deck? Okay, finally ending, so it's now down to us to try and break through this shield. Break through this field again, I am gonna once again go for my Tribute. Okay, and with my other Tribute Lanius, Sapphire Swallow is destroyed, we'll attack with Avenge Vulture. Please nothing, yes! She has no more protection. Now I direct attack with Vanishing Lanius. And Stranger Falcon. So that will leave her with 3k life. Now if all goes well, we should be able to settle this on the next turn. I really do not want to lose my deck out at this point. We'll drop a tribute. A field is basically pretty much set up already at this point. If only it wasn't Link format, then I could have like a Blaze Falcon on top of my Stranger Falcon and then we could like just uh, inflict some uh, consistent damage in Jester Confit, okay. It's a set, so that's fine. She's ending her turn again, and yeah. This duel is taking a while just because of the stalls. Overly captured. Okay, this will come in useful if she does somehow manage to get another, uh, what was that? Another Assemble Nightingale out for whatever reason at this point. So now we go into the battle phase. Uh, Tribute Lanius will attack the Jester Confit. We'll get the damage on right there. We'll use Avenge Vulture to destroy the face down. It's a Cobalt Sparrow. And now I direct attack of Rain Raptor Stranger Falcon. Strange Claw Revolution! Okay, we still win, we still win, we still win, that's fine. Uh, yes, uh, no, I mean not activating the effect of, attack, uh, of a card, but we will continue to attack. I attack Lirilla Sapphire Swallow with Rain Raptor Stranger Falcon. Strange Claw Revolution! Oh yeah. So our first match with uh, Ruri is finally over Dual Interrupted. Okay. We've got Monsters for Hire as a challenge deck. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, independent Nightingale and a Zembolt Nightingale. I guess Independent is like her true trump card that comes after a Zembolt, but she didn't manage to use it. And now we are going to get the chance to play as Yuri in Duel Interrupted against Yugo. Okay, this is going to be pretty awesome because I've always wanted to try Predator Plants. We'll go second. Man, this, this is going to be pretty fun. Okay, we've got Polymerization early already and I'm definitely gonna have to read these guys because I'm not familiar with their effects. 
He's starting off with just a Pachingo card, which I don't think is a very ideal play. Anyway, our extra deck contains 3 copies of Star Venom Fusion Dragon and 3 copies of Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon. Very nice. Okay, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go for it. I normal summon Predaplant's Flytrap from my hand. Once per turn, I'll target the Pachingo card and give it a Predator counter, which will now allow me to tribute it in order to bring out my Predaplant's Drosophyllum Hydra. And now I have two Predaplant monsters on the field. I activate the Magic Card, Pulverization. And I'm gonna fuse the Flytrap and the Drosophyllum Hydra from my field. Two beautiful flowers with an insect alluring fragrance. Now become one and from the hell beneath your petals, give birth to a new terror. Fusion Summon! Level 8, the poisonous dragon with ravenous fangs, Star Venom Fusion Dragon! Man, the dimensional dragons are so epic in this game. This is like... My first time bringing out Star Venom Fusion in like any Yu-Gi-Oh match ever. Now I'll just attack with Star Venom Fusion Dragon, Venom Corruption! And end my turn. Hold on, I should actually rethink the attack name for that because it should follow the same trend as like the Spiral Strike Burst, the Whirlwind Helldive Slasher and the Lightning Disobey of Rebellion. End my turn. Hmm, I think I'll just bring out my Moray Nepenthes and we'll use it to attack first. Red Eye dies and we get to equip it, very nice. So he won't even be able to bring it back from the grave. And now I attack with Star Venom Fusion Dragon, Corruption Wave of Venom! Nice. And I'll end my turn. Dude, come on Hugo, can you put up a better fight than this? Or is this match really gonna turn out this way? Oh man, it looks like this is really going to be the end of the match right here. We got Predaponix. I'm just gonna go into my battle phase. I attack with Moray Nepenthes. It's just a Ohaji kid and uh, no, I don't think I'm gonna steal it anymore. And I direct attack with Star Venom Fusion Dragon, Corruption Wave of Venom! Oh man, we completely wrecked Hugo there. <laughs> and we didn't even bring out, uh, green, we didn't even need to bring out Greedy Venom. Next duel is time to reunite. We got Speedroid, Rubber Band, Plane, and Razorang, and Shock Surprise. Oh, now we will fight Yuri as Yuya. I see. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, this will be the final battle. Basically, if we win this, we absorb both Yuri and Hugo, and Zark will be complete. Squid Drosera. Wait, dude, that's crazy! Oh my god! Okay, this is a legit challenging fight, I feel. Looks like we gotta try that again. The unfortunate thing in the previous match is that we literally did not manage to draw into our All Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Which if we had, we could have like uh, dealt with the situation somehow. And well, we're starting out with it now, so that's something good as well as a Skullcrobat Joker. So things are looking uh, a bit more positive this time for us. That is nice. Predator pruning. Bringing out that Klami Dosundu. And a Graceful Charity as well, it's a strong starting play. But it looks like, in the previous game, he had a really good opening game because of all the Predator counters, but it looks like he doesn't have that this time. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to summon Skullcrobat Joker. Super classic play right here. And using its effect, I believe we will search for a Time Gazer. I mean, a Stargazer, right. We'll take Stargazer. Nice, and then we will set Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon in one of the Pendulum Scales. Let's set our Breakaway just in case that might come in handy later actually. And end our turn, we will use the effect of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon in order to search for Time Gazer Magician. I should have attacked with Skullcrobat Joker, forgot about that, <laughs> apologies. Hmm. He's tributing it. 
for Banksy Ogre. Wow. That is really annoying. I'm gonna have to take that, but it goes into the extra deck, which is honestly pretty fine. And now we draw into another Skulko Bat Joker. I have a pretty good idea. I'm going to set my Scale 1 Stargazer Magician and my Scale 8 Time Gazer Magician in the Pendulum Zones. With this, I can now simultaneously summon monsters between levels 2 to 7. So let's go, I'm gonna call All Eyes Pendulum Dragon from the extra deck and... Nothing from my hand. Sway, Pendulum of Souls, draw an arc of light across the heavens. Pendulum Summon, come forth, my servant monsters from the extra deck, Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Nice. Okay. So we got Odd Eyes out already, which is going to be our fodder for our other extra deck summons. And I am going to normal summon Performable Trump Witch. But we are not going to use its effect. We are actually just going to activate the magic card, Polarization. We are going to go for Rune Eyes. Fusing the Trump Witch and Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragons on the field. Mischievous Witch, become a bright light and dwell in the eyes of the dragon. Now become one! Fusion Summon! Level 8, the Arcane Dragon Wielder of Ancient Magic, Rune Eyes Pendulum Dragon! And since it was summoned this way, this turn it is not affected by my opponent's monster effects. Uh, there is nothing else I can do this turn. So now we'll attack, uh, what's its name? Banksyogre with Rune Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Shiny first! It triggers, but we should block that. Yes, we are still level 8 with no counters. So we are very safe right now. Right, okay, Rune Eyes is definitely a good play to make here. Sarasanians. Wait, what? Oh, he self-destructs for us. So that he can destroy me and he gets a search of Orphris Scorpio which is going to be a very deadly card as I've seen in the previous match. But we are still in a very nice position here. Stargazer Magician. I'm going to normal summon my Skullcrobat Joker and I think you guys know what's coming using its effect we are going to search for a second All Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Alright, and we are just going to Pendulum Summon from here, bringing out Odd Eyes from the deck, the Odd Eyes and Stargazer, and Performable Camelot from our hand! Sway, Pendulum of Souls, draw an arc of light across the heavens! Pendulum Summon, come forth, my monster servants once again! Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon from the extra deck! You know, I think I kind of should have gotten a coin dragon here, but it's fine. And All Eyes Pendulum Dragon from my hand, we are going to watch the animation once more. But yes, now that we have the chance to strike, let's basically just try to end this duel as efficiently as possible. We will just bring out Stargazer Magician as well. And our performable Camelot. Battle! I direct attack with Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, Spiral Strike Burst! Oh right, and he can't, he can't activate spells or traps. I direct attack with my second Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, Spiral Strike Burst! And that is it. We have defeated Yuri containing Yugo's soul. Both our souls are fused together and now it is time for a ray of hope. We got Predaplant, Banksy Ogre, Sarasians and Offrey Scorpio and now it is time to settle the score, the final battle against the villain of Arc 5, Zark, playing as Akaba Reiji in Array of Hope. Man, okay, this is gonna be pretty intense using a Zark deck. Uh, gonna play Estonia. Oh man, the Emperor Dragons. I think this is probably going to be pretty difficult, like, his Zark, unlike many of the other, like, uh, final villains, his endgame, his, uh, his real-life deck is just pretty sick as well, like, compared to his anime deck. And he's going to Pendulum Call, Harmonizing Magician and Black Tech Magician. He has got all the magicians right now. Harmonizing and... Purple Poison. Dude! A Pendulum Summon right off the bat. And he's... 
Okay, Black Fang. But that is all he's gonna do this turn. Now let's see what we can do, but first let's check out our extra deck. Yes! Two DDD Wave King Caesars and DDD Wave High King. A uh, copy of Stone King Darius. Duo Dawn King Kali Yuga. We've got two Alexanders and two High Alexanders. Two King Darks. Two Genghis. But why no King Gang? Why no High Genghis? I'm going to start with Dark Contract with the Gate. Of course, this is like the super classic mega... Uh, DD card, and we will activate it of course, and let's see what we have here. I am going to choose Frau Ogre. Now I'll set DDD contract change, and I am going to be setting my DDs, my skill 1 DD summons Galilei, and my skill 8 DD summon Nicola in the Pendulum Zones. With this, I can now simultaneously summon monsters between levels 2 to 7. I'm going to choose both the DD Proud Ogre and the Savan Nicola from my hands. Oh great power that shakes my very soul. Now rise within me and become a light that rends the dark. Pendulum summon. Come forth, my faithful monsters. DD Proud Ogre. As well as DD Savan Nicola. Both level 6. Now at this point, I think I am going to step into my battle phase first. We'll attack a uh, Black Fang Magician with Savan Nicola. Unfortunately, that Purple Fang Magician is going to trigger. But it is just once per turn, so we'll use Proud Ogre to finish it off. And with that, uh, yeah. Well, he'll get the search of Pendulum Graph. But we are just going to end our turn right there. He's summoning Black Fang. Yes, I think he is actually gonna go for it, but fine, I'll let him. Purple Poison Magician triggers. Star Pendulumograph gives him another search. And I'm gonna take that hit from my Proud Ogre. Okay, and he's putting down White Wing Magician this time. For a Pendulum Summon at this point. Oh, to bring back the Black Fang in his extra deck, right. And Supreme King Gate Infinity. He is tributing both for a fusion summon of Supreme King Dragon, Starving Venom right now. Wow. Dude, this is crazy. Okay. Now what am I going to be able to do about this? Dark Contract with the Gate, I'm going to have to take that damage and... Galilee's scale increases to 3. Okay, I've got an idea. I'm going to start with Dark Contract with the Gates. And we are going to add DD Savant Copernicus from the deck to the hand. Once again, we'll Pendulum Summon. This time, I choose Proud Ogre and the Savant Copernicus from my hand. Alright, I think this is the right move to make. And DD Savant Copernicus. Alright. Uh, yes, I'll activate Copernicus's effect. So now this allows me to send one card to my grave. I am gonna drop one Vice Typhoon. Now I activate from my hand the Dark Contract with the Swamp King, allowing me to perform a fusion summon using the DD monsters on my field. And I am gonna fuse my DD Proud Ogre as well as my DD Savant Copernicus. Proud Knight, be absorbed into the crucible of disaster and be reborn as a new king! Come forth! Fusion Summon! Level 7, the DDD Oracle King, Dark! The ruler who carries the glory of God. And now we will go into our battle phase at this point and just attack that Supreme King Dragon Star... What? Oh, dang, he countered that so hard, dude. Oh man, wait, this is actually a really bad situation right now. There is nothing I can move on from this. Dude.
Wait, I'll basically take 2k. I'm gonna activate DDD contract change. Huh, let me think about this. I think I've got to do this. I'll banish Dark. So that he'll be reduced to 200. So at the very least, uh... Well, he's going for a Pendulum Summon again. Okay, this match is as difficult as I anticipated. Dude, okay. White Wing Magician is coming down. Ah, oh, dude, this is gonna be so tough. We've got another fusion contract. We are gonna take 2k for the contracts on our field, and Galilei is gonna go up to level 5. I'm gonna just have to use my search again, dude. I'm up against a wall right now. I choose my second crowd over. Now I'm going to Pendulum Summon of course and I'm going to bring out the Proud Ogre in my extra deck as well as one Proud Ogre from my hand. So we have two Proud Ogres on the field right now. My Pendulum skills are going to be disabled soon. If only there was a way I had to destroy Time Pendulum Graph. But it looks like my only option to do that with is Kali Yuga, which I just can't do right now. Now I'll set the Dark Contract with the Witch so that we can do something about the Time Pendulum Graph and attack White Wing Magician. He activates Time Pendulum Graph, of course, destroying those, and that will destroy, but he'll get another search of it, Double Iris Magician, and now I'll destroy White Wing Magician with my second Cloud Ogre. Okay, now I need to think about this. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for it. Main Phase 2. I activate the effect of the Dark Contract with the Swamp King again. And I'm gonna fuse the DD Proud Ogre from the field and the DD Vice Typhoon in my graveyard. We are gonna bring Dark back again. Alright. And just place it down over there. And with that, we will end our turn. Okay. Okay! This is when I activate something! I activate the trap card, Dark Contract with the Witch! Yes, I use the effect now by discarding Dark Contract with the Swamp King. I will pop Pendulum Graph. It's a continuous trap, so if it is smashed, he cannot activate the effect. Yes! Okay. Yes. Yes. I think we got this. His extra monster zone is locked with Starving Venom. So, okay, he brings down Supreme King Gate Zero. And now he's gonna Pendulum Summon. But it's just a double Iris Magician in defense position. I do not think there is anything else he can do. I do not think... Yes, he's sending his monsters to defense position. We managed to pull through this with our second Dark. And we drew into... I will definitely... Wait, no, Dark should be automatic, so I should be healing instead! Yes! Taste the power of my contracts and DDD! Man, Oracle King Dark is so sick! Uh, now I kind of want to get rid of my Galilee. But actually, I guess I also don't really need the Pendulum anymore. I'll just use my Dark Contract with the game again. I am going to add Galilee from my deck to my hand. Okay, I didn't know I had this option. I'll activate Galilee's effect. By discarding it, I'm allowed to return DD my other DD Savant Galilee back to my hand. And now I can reset it in the Pendulum Zone as Scale 1! And that basically unlocks all of my Pendulum Summons again! Unfortunately, my extra monster zone is locked right now. I'm just going to use Dark to destroy the Double Iris Magician, which will unfortunately give him the search again. Another star pendulum graph. So he's just searching, but it's kind of pointless. He can't uh, exceed summon or bring out any of his other extra deck monsters anyway, because I'm keeping his extra monster zone locked. We have to until the situation is a bit safer to battle in, and we are just gonna slowly regain some life from dark, uh, from dark for now, and then just uh, regain our resources. Looks like he's pendulum summoning again. Wait, Astrograph Sorcerer? 
Okay, but there's no way he's bringing Zark out now because I basically just blocked him so hard with that Star Banner Fusion Dragon that I'm just refusing to destroy. He's just setting another card. Hmm? What's going on? He's destroying it in order to bring out Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. Okay. Fine, fine. It has its effect negated, right? Yeah, okay. So this is still fine for us. Things are still going pretty well. We've got another Dark contract with the Swamp King. We are gonna heal so much with Dark. Nice. Okay, so the situation's still pretty good for us. But I really wish we could draw into more monsters though. Uh, yeah, Galilei is gonna trigger again. I'll activate the Dark Contract with the Gate again, of course, for another search. This time, I'm gonna add Newton to my hand. I'll use Dark Contract with the Witch. This time, we'll discard the our Contract with the Swamp King to finally destroy that Star Pendulum Graph. And going into my Battle Phase, we are just going to uh, pop that face down. It's a double Iris Magician. Oh wait, he gets to add another Pendulum Graph, dude! Oh, this is so exhausting, I end my turn. I end my turn! He's not gonna be able to bring out Zark, right? He still needs a Pendulum Dragon and a few- and a... Dragon Spearer?! Wait! Star Venom? No way! Loot! Dude! Do I have no choice now? Okay, Star Phantom's out of 2.8k. His effect will trigger absorbing my stats, I believe. For 7k, he goes into the battle phase. I'm just gonna have to activate my Dark Contract with the Witch. I literally have no choice right now. I'm gonna discard Newton and pop Star Phantom Fusion Dragon. Okay. It's destroyed, so I'll get wrecked as well, so I am going to start facing some major damage from my contracts. Ouch! Ouch! And ouch! So I think I really have to start thinking about what I'm gonna do at this point. We are gonna search with the dark contract with the gate again, of course. I'm going for Kepler. Now I will normal summon Kepler and using Kepler's effect, I will target another DD card I control and return it to my hand and the one I'm actually going to return is DD Savan Nicola. Okay, now I'll set my Torrential Tribute and I am just going to activate my Dark Contract with the Swamp King here fusing out Genghis using the Kepler on my field as well as hmm, I'll just pick the Galilei in my grave. This duel has gone on for way too long and yet it's it's oh, technically only turn 12 but it's like I've had to think so much for this. So we bring out DD Flame King Genghis like I don't even have like the energy to chant anymore. Uh, we'll go into our battle phase. I will attack with Genghis. Okay. So that's 5k down on him. Now let's see what his next move is going to be. Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. Okay, there's nothing I can really do about that now. He'll just get the search, which will put him into... That will fix his pendulum skills again. Yep, Supreme King gate zero. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm waiting for him to pendulum stop. Okay, he's doing it. So that'll bring out Black Fang Magician from his extra deck and Supreme King Gate Infinity. At this point, that's when I activate my Torrential Tribute. And I am just gonna block everything on the field at this point. Yes. Star Pendulum Graph will give him a search, fine. I don't really want to sacrifice the cards I have in my hand right now. He ends his turn! Okay. 
Now this is potentially our chance. Yes, we drew into Kepler. I'm gonna take 3k from this. I don't care, that's fine. Technically, I kind of should get, get let go of the Swamp King now, right? Uh, that's gonna be scale 7 at this point. Wait, I've got it. I finally got it. The solution to this duel. Activate Dark Contract with the gate. And there is only one card I am going to search for, man. DD Savant Thomas. Thank you for the draw into Kepler, man. Because now, I'm gonna set the scale 10 DD Savant Kepler in my Pendulum Zones. And with these two monsters, I can simultaneously summon monsters between levels 8 and 9. You guys know what's coming. Both of the DD Savant Thomases from my hand. Oh, great power that shakes my very soul. Now rise up within me and become the light that rents the dark. Pendulum Summon. DD Summon Thomases from my hand. Yes. Both of them. And now into my extra deck. I overlay my level 8 DD Summon Thomas with my other level 8 DD Summon Thomas. With these two monsters, I construct the overlay network. When two suns rise, the horizon of a new world shall appear! Now come forth, my ultimate monster! Rank 8, DDD, Dual Dawn King Kali Yuga! Yes! I activate Kali Yuga's effect! By detaching one overlay unit, I activate Dawn of the New World! I destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. Wow! And now, I attack with DDD, Duo Don King Kali Yuga directly! Dawn of the New Era! 1.5k life on Zark. We have made it this far. We are gonna win on the first attempt. He has three cards in his hand. It's a set. He can't do anything. Okay, okay. We've got two Nicolas, which I am not sure we should actually place down now. Whoa, we are just gonna continue attacking with Kali Yuga again. No! Oh, Kali Yuga was smashed so easily! He's got no monsters. Please, please, I need a monster! Dark contract with the gate. I activate it again. Oh, man. Dude, and I've got... These are scale 8s. I activate Dark Contract with the gates. And now we are gonna find a scale 1 that will remain on the field. I believe it's Galilee. No, Galilee increases. I need Copernicus. I add DD7 Copernicus to my hand. Oh my god, we made it here. I'm placing the scale 1 DD7 Copernicus and the scale 8 DD7 Nicola in the Pendulum Zones. With this, I can special summon monsters simultaneously between levels 2 to 7. Wow. I bring out Proud Ogre and the Nicola from my hand. Oh, great power that shakes my very soul. Now rise up within me and become the light that rents the dark. Pendulum Summon! Come forth, my faithful monsters. DD Proud Ogre and DD Summon's Nicola. Battle! I direct, attack, I direct attack with DD Proud Ogre. Slash of Pride! I can't believe that duel is finally over. Man, that, that took so much thinking. Dude, what just happened? One last duel. One last duel, okay. Uh, Supreme King Zark, Supreme King Gate Zero, and Supreme Rage. So we're only left with two duels now that Zark is finally defeated. It's time for Yuya to regain his smile. So now Zark has been defeated. The fourth Yuya has returned to being his normal self. The souls of Yugo, Yuto, and Yuri are still remaining within inside him, but just essentially not alive in a way, if that makes sense. We are now having to reclaim our smile. First, we have a battle against Akaba Reiji. In our extra deck, we have all. We basically have everybody's dragons together. Now, let's see what we can do. 
Honestly, it doesn't look like we have much options other than setting Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon in our extra deck. I, I mean in the Pendulum Zone and ending our turn, activating its effect for a surge. Okay, let's grab our Odd Eyes Unicorn and end our turn. It looks like, well, now that Zalk is defeated, I think that means the Magicians are basically gone. So that's why we basically have a full per Doom King Armageddon. Oh, into Necro Slime. Doom King Armageddon's effect gives it a stat boost, but I mean, is that all? Right, I think that's literally all. Okay, I think he doesn't have that great of a starting hand either. Okay, end phase. The turn is gonna change, and... Wait, Odd Eyes Phantom Dragon! What is this guy doing here? I'm setting the scale 3 Odd Eyes Light Phoenix. And the scale 8 Odd Eyes Unicorn in the Pendulum Zones. With this, I can now simultaneously summon monsters between levels 4 to 7. Uh, I think... Okay, you know what? Let's just go for the other All Eyes Light Phoenix as well. Sway, Pendulum of Souls. Draw an arc of lights across the heavens. Pendulum summon! Come forth, my monster servants, from the extra deck, All Eyes Pendulum Dragon. So cool that they actually decided to include Phantom for this duel. Okay, and from our hand, we've got uh, Odd Eyes Phantom Dragon first, as well as Odd Eyes Light Phoenix. Okay, so to play it smart, we will attack the Necro Slime with Pendulum Dragon first for the Spiral Strike Burst. Oh, dude, Dark Contract of the Witch, what's he gonna destroy? Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, but it just comes back, so that's just fine. Now I'll attack with Odd Eyes Phantom Dragon. And I think I'll just use Unicorn's effect, we will target uh, Light Phoenix to gain the boost. Oh yeah, 3.2k! And then we activate the Odd Eyes Phantom Dragon effect as well. Wait a minute, oh dude! If it wasn't for that uh, Dark Contract with the Witch, we basically would have won already. I end my turn. Dude, this duel is going by too fast. I really hope we can pull into a Pendulum Summon from this. Uh, okay. He's gonna destroy it. Okay. But why do? That's a bit weird. He's just going for a set. And I think uh, we basically won already. I just go into my battle phase. I attack with a uh, performable Odd Eyes Light Phoenix. DDD contract change. Okay, he's gonna get a search for the Copernicus, but that's not gonna save him. We're gonna destroy the DD Knight Howling, and now I direct attack with Odd Eyes Phantom Dragon! Phantom Strike Burst! So yes, we have just basically defeated Akava Reiji just like that, and the final duel, that's a wrap! We got uh, King Bright Armageddon, Biowolf, and Burfromet. And now it's time for Yuya to face his father, Sakaki Yusho. In the final battle of the Arc 5 campaign and basically this entire League Evolution story mode. We are going with Scissors and I think he should be playing a uh, Performer Pulse, right? And then his ace monster is the, the really cool looking Performer Pulse. Wait, he has no extra deck? Okay. Wait, we've got Odd Eyes Gravity and Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon. What are... Dude! Okay, he is just uh, putting down a Pendulum Sorcerer, which means he probably doesn't really have an ideal hand. We've got one on each and Advanced Ritual Art. First, I'm going to activate my Advanced Ritual Art. So let's select one of our Gravity Dragons and we are going to discard an Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon from our deck in order to special summon Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. Alright, nice. Okay, and now I'm going to set my scale for Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and my scale 7 Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon in the Pendulum Zones. With this, I can simultaneously summon monsters between levels 5 to 7. So let's do this. Sway, Pendulum of Souls. For the final time, draw an arc of light across the heavens. Pendulum Summon, come forth, my servant monster, Odd Eyes Dragon. Okay. So, let's go into our battle phase here. Odd Eyes Dragon will attack with Strike Burst. 1k damage there, and then we'll attack with Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon, Gravity Burst! Okay, 
Dude, if this du if this duel ends really quickly as well, uh, I'm gonna activate the effect of Pendulum Dragon, and we are good. Oh, we've got Noble Dragon Magician. Let's add that. That should be fine. I see. And should I do this? Yes, I should. I activate on Ice Arc Pendulum Dragon. I can literally bring out anything I want right now. I think I am gonna go for on Ice Lancer Dragon. Nice, dude, this is crazy. Dude, it's like, after Zark, the last two duels, why are they so easy? I'm not even sure Yusho will be able to do anything against this. He'll put a monster in defense position and maybe set something? End his turn, dude! Wow, seriously, that's crazy. I am going to set my Noble Dragon Magician in the left pendulum zone. Oh wait, it's destroyed immediately? Ah, no wonder I need another magician, but that's not too important. I attack the face down monster with Odd Eyes Dragon! Strike Burst! Performable Paratrio. Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon will inflict 500 for him to activate that. Performable Sky Magician! That's his ace card! Okay, now I attack it with Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. And that'll trigger again. And Sky Magician will trigger. Hold on, I think I'm just going to use its effect and I'm going to sacrifice my other gravity dragon because it doesn't really need to be there and then I direct attack with Odd Eyes Lancer Dragon! Okay, and Yusho is only left with 200 life, what is going on? You know what, maybe I should just combine this with the previous episode for one giant episode. Ending his turn. Into, alright. You know what? Uh, let's just do this. Battle! I direct attack with Odd Eyes Lancer Dragon! Spiral Lance Burst! And it's over. It's over. We have defeated Yusho as Yuya. We unlocked Sky Magician, Review Dancer, and Performance Hurricane. And that is literally the final duel of Arc 5 right there. We have completed every single story duel in the Legacy of Duelist Link Evolution story mode, not counting reverse duels of course. But other than that, we've basically seen everything and we have completed this game's story mode. So this has really been one amazing ride. Like, I've never really played a game where I could play through all of the story modes of every single Yu-Gi-Oh! season before. Especially like, uh... I don't think I've ever played the 5D stories or the GX story or the Arc 5 story. The original one, of course, there were a bunch of old games with dual parts of the dual monster story, but I guess not for the Waking the Dragons arc. And 5Ds, I, I wasn't really into Yu-Gi-Oh at the time, so I missed out a lot of the games for 5Ds as well. But this, this playthrough has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the whole of it. And as for what I'm going to do for now, I think now that I finished the story mode, I think I'm just going to take a break from this game first. And of course, I won't be having like uh, triple weekly uploads on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday anymore since we finished the story mode. But maybe after resting from this game for maybe a couple of weeks or a month or two, I might come back and like just try some of the reverse duels. Of course, maybe try some online competitive matches, make my own decks, and then try, of course, the battle pack mode as well. Because still play draft play sounds like it'll be a lot of fun as well. But yes. That'll be all for the Legacy of Duelist Link Evolution Story Mode. If, you, if you've been here from start to finish and you enjoyed this ride, do give this video and all of the rest as well if you can an epic awesome thumbs up. Let me know how you guys felt about this whole series in the comment section down below. Any feedback would be great. What do you guys like about it? What do you guys dislike about it? And anything that could be improved. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh, OCG, and basically all kinds of Yu-Gi-Oh content related videos. And with that, hope to see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh video. Share it, declare it, tell me, can you see? I drift in darkness in search of memories. I